As parents, we talk about two things all the time. We get excited about these things all the time. When they happen, we just want to tell the whole world, your baby's sleeping and your baby's pooping. Yay! <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time I talked about poop, I would have a lot of dollar bills. And so I want to tell you guys today that the number one most frustrating thing when it comes to your child's sleep and poop are early morning dirty diapers, right? Like what can we do about it? Today I'm gonna get through some strategies on how can we handle these early morning poopy diapers? How can we try to stop them and give you some practical steps to try first thing in the morning? Hey there, I'm Becca Campbell, your pediatric sleep consultant. Welcome to the Little Z Sleep YouTube channel. My mission here is to help resolve your child's exhausting sleep habits. I firmly believe that we can be happy, healthy, and well-rested families. Now, it may seem like that's impossible if your child is waking up early with a poopy diaper. So strategies like this, I am all in on. I wanna give you practical step-by-step -step action plans to solve it. So make sure you subscribe to this channel because I am not going to shy away from strategies that are real in your life. I wanna give you an action plan and a step-by-step -step process to make sure we can see that it comes to an end and help you resolve them. Now. Dirty diapers in the early morning are a huge problem that I hear about all the time. Disclaimer, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot we can do about when your child goes to the bathroom. I can give you some strategies I've shared throughout the years that have helped solve this, but this is kind of a video where I can't guarantee that it's going to work simply because your child's process and when they go to the potty is not something that I can obviously habitually change, but we can help. So let's get into the strategies on how to help solve these early morning poopy diapers. Why does your child have an early morning poopy diaper? Well, it could be because they are habitually waking up early. They're dealing with that baseline of an early morning waking. Perhaps they're bored. Perhaps they're crying. Perhaps their just body is ready and in tune to go to the bathroom first thing in the morning. I don't really know. But I will say that having a baby who wakes up 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m. and immediately going poopy seems so frustrating because it seems like, well, don't I have to go change it immediately? Well, let's kind of reverse the process. You see, I am all about looking at the root cause of things. So let's actually take this all the way back to bedtime routine. The first strategy that I want to ask you, is there a spot, a place, a toy, something in your house that tends to be your child's like poopy spot? Let me explain. My oldest daughter, who's now six, there was a toy. It was one of those like kind of tabletop activity centers where you could stand as a baby and like press the buttons. When she would go play at that, inevitably every time she had a dirty diaper. Now we had the issue of a dirty diaper during nap time. You can actually apply these strategies to that too. But if your child has a toy, a spot, a place that they go poopy, they kind of like go to that little quiet corner and they end up, you know, filling their diaper, then I want you to offer that during or before the bedtime routine. So maybe while you're getting the bath ready, you kind of urge your child to go over to that spot have another partner go supervise them or have it nearby so you can watch them. Just kind of offer that like, hey, don't you wanna to go to the bathroom? <laughs> go over there. So offer that place for them, see if they will go ahead and get their dirty diaper out of their system, see if they'll do it then. If not, oh well, we tried. It's just a strategy to see if we can help. Then you're gonna go through your bedtime routine per usual. Okay, our entire baby bedtime routine is actually outlined in one of our YouTube videos, so make sure you check that out. At the end of bedtime routine, where you are kind of getting them prepared to get into bed, I want you, when you're doing their diaper and doing your jammies, grab your favorite diaper cream. I will tag my favorite one below in the show notes, but I need you to get high quality diaper cream. And you are going to literally, strategy two, layer on the diaper cream like you're icing a cake. My sister-in-law told me this um, one day when Ellie had a giant diaper rash. I don't know why she was our child who had the diaper problem. But anyways, I had always just kind of done like a little thin, you know, a little bit of diaper cream. She was like, oh no girl, you gotta like ice a cake. <laughs> and it made a world of a difference. So you're going to take the top quality, whatever your favorite diaper cream is, and you're going to slather the little, their little bum like you are icing a cake. 
lay it on thick. Wrap them all up, do your jammies, all that good stuff, finish your bedtime routine, plop them into the crib. So we know, okay, you've offered your child to like, do you wanna go potty before, do you like wanna go get your poopy out before bedtime? Then you've offered, okay, we're gonna slather you up with diaper cream so that we know you're protected, you're gonna be okay. Now, the night goes through its early morning. There are two different ways that we can do strategy three. So there's like, strat there's strategy number three, option A, option B. Option A, if you have a newborn, you are absolutely going to go change their diaper. They might, they may even need a feed at that four, five, six a.m., depending on what your night has been like. So yes, if you have a newborn, you're going to go in. Oh, I see you have a poopy diaper. Okay, we're going to change this. You're going to offer that feed. You're going to get them back to sleep because remember, newborns, we're not sleep training. They cannot self-soothe. Like you need to help them. After this time, strategy three B. I actually would prefer you to not go in. Now let's camp out here for a second. How many of you have tried to go in and change your, dir your the dirty diaper and then leave the room and your baby went from like a level two, I'm upset because I have a, a poopy diaper to like a level 20, I'm upset because I have a poopy diaper. Yes, it's a thing. They're going to get so mad because you've just changed them and left, they are probably feeling like they're ready to get up. Even though it's 4 a.m., it's not time to wake up for the day. So you, I would rather you just not go in there, do not change their diaper. Hey, we know in our mind, we offered you to go potty. Okay, we tried that, then we slathered you up with diaper cream. So we know they're going to be fine. Okay, that diaper cream is there to protect them from not getting a rash from their poopy diaper. I would rather you not go in. Now, with this strategy, there's actually a little deeper nugget in this, a little bonus tip for this strategy. This step 3B will only work if your child is an independent sleeper. If your child uses a pacifier to fall asleep, if you've been rocking them to sleep, if you've been feeding them a bottle or nursing them to drowsiness to put them to sleep, this strategy simply is not fair, and I wanna explain. You see, if you have offered your child any type of prop, any type of means that says, hey, you can use these external things to fall asleep, if you don't go in there at four, five, six a.m. because they, you think they have a dirty diaper, this is really unfair. Because not only are they waking up because they have a dirty diaper, they're also waking up because they're like, hey, bring my prop back, bring it back. I gotta go back to sleep. I can only go to sleep if I have my pacifier and I can't find it. I can only go to sleep if you're rocking me and you're not here. I can only go to sleep if you have the bottle and there's no bottle here. So this strategy in itself only works if your child has been sleep trained through a program, through a plan, through a method that ensures your child is 100% sleeping independently. This will not work and I don't want you to do it if your child has been using props to fall asleep. I am all about fair and consistent plans. So if you're like, oh, what? I didn't realize a pacifier or a rocking or a bottle or all these things. I didn't realize that that was hindering my child's sleep then of course we have a sleep plan for you inside of our baby sleepy coaching. But if you know, oh yeah, girl, like my baby sleeps independently, they put themselves asleep within 10 minutes, they sleep great, like we're good, then strategy three is do not go in there. Watch them and do visual checks on the monitor. It will go way worse if you actually go in there. Now, I want you to know that we really only need to be doing this for about four to five mornings. And after four to five mornings, I want to make sure that your child is literally getting that like early morning wake out of their system. That's a strategy that it is part of that extinction method where you're not going in. And I'm okay with this at this point because your child already knows the foundations of sleep. They're having an early morning poopy diaper. We've already given them their diaper cream. We've offered them to try to go poopy earlier and it didn't, it didn't do anything. So it's going to be better for you just to do visual checks. Just watch them on the monitor. Obviously, if they are getting their limbs stuck or they need some help, like repositioning, you can go in there to do that. But I would much rather you do visual checks on the monitor to make sure, okay, you know what? You're gonna be way more upset if I actually go and change you right now. So the final strategy, and this is like one that may blow your mind a little bit. What does this have to do with poopy diapers? I actually need you, when you do go to get your little one up in the morning, take a look around the room and evaluate the darkness. 
I was recently sent two images by families inside of our programs. They wanted us to check the darkness of their room. And while they had done the blackout curtains and the blackout shades, there was light streaming in from street lights, from parking lot lights, in through the top of the curtains. And so we said, oh, no, 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 we've got to fix that. So I need you to go into your child's room. When it is time to go get them up at that 11, 12 hour mark, wherever your child's goal marker is to get up for the morning, go in their room, don't turn the light on, but just kind of like look around. Be like, is there any light coming in here? And if you cannot see your hand in front of your face, then we're good. If there is light streaming in, then we definitely need to check out some of our top blackout solutions. Blackout, easy covers, window windows, something, foil, whatever you need. We have a video on that for you. But if your child's room is bright, then it kind of goes with that whole mindset of like, if they use props, it's unfair to just let them be because they're looking for those props. If your child's room has light streaming in the room in the early morning time, they're not gonna go back to sleep because they're convinced it's time to get up. I see things like it's morning time, let's start the day and they're just gonna be mad. So in summary of all of this, I know that dirty diapers are frustrating. I totally get that. We can do some things to help. So step one, we can offer a space for your child to like, hey, do you wanna go over here? Like, let's offer to see if they want to go and get that poopy out of them before bedtime. During bedtime, step two, during bedtime, get that diaper cream laid on thick like you're icing a cake. Step three, if you have a newborn, go change them. Step 3B, if you don't have a newborn, your baby is an independent sleeper, your toddler's an independent sleeper, do not go in, do visual checks on the monitor, there's no need for you to go in, you're gonna get them way more upset if you do. And step four is to make sure their room is on par, like the darkness is there, we're all good, and we know that for sure. How long is this going to last for? Well, early morning dirty diapers could be a phase, it could just be like a two to three week thing. It could have been going on for months, but one big measure of success here is not that your child has a poopy diaper and then, you know, that just keeps going. Like you've done all these things, but they keep having an early morning poopy diaper. The measure of success here is that if your child, yes, maybe stops, or they keep having that early morning poopy diaper, they wake up at four, they have a dirty diaper, but they go back to sleep because you didn't go in there and you didn't disturb them and you didn't get them distracted or riled up or like excited that it could possibly be morning. They already know how to sleep well. You've laid that foundation. You've sleep trained them. We're reminding them like, hey, it's not time to get up yet. We've done all these things. We've done all these steps to make sure that they can, you can go back to sleep. And that's sometimes, that's the biggest piece of this is that because right now the baby's been conditioned like, oh, you're gonna come in here. You're gonna change my diaper. I might start fussing even more than that. And you'll get me out of the room and we'll start the day at five. Instead, we're going to give them that space to see, can you fall back to sleep? And by doing so, they may still have an early morning dirty diaper, but they may fall back to sleep. So I understand that early morning diapers are extremely frustrating. And I, I want you to walk through these strategies. I want you to comment below how this is going for you. And on, a, on like a level one to 10, like how frustrated are you with this and how these strategies can help. I'm really excited to make sure that we can try to eliminate this for your little one because I know it's a big pain point. If you enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any strategies and helpful tips that we share to help your little one continue to sleep well and to make sure that you are a happy, healthy, and well-rested family. Thanks so much for being here. Sweet dreams. See you next time.